month of May. Our month of May has been tagged the month of this same Jesus. Amen. I pray that the same Jesus who was in the beginning, who by his own power created everything, the same Jesus who rose the dead from um, the grave, the same Jesus who has all powers, he said, all the power in heaven on earth and beneath the earth has been given unto to me. I pray that that same Jesus will remain manifest in our lives this month of May in Jesus' name. And when we're doing the conclusion of prayer, a, um, a passage came to my mind that's in Genesis chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. The Bible said, On the fifth day, God said, Let the water steam with, with um, life, and let it count the truth with, um, with the birth of the air. And I pray that everything that represents water in our lives, be it our finances, our jobs, will begin to fill with life in Jesus' name. And our skies will be filled with potentials in the name of Jesus. And I pray that will be our function in Jesus' name. Today, by God's grace, we'll be looking at which are called this same Jesus. But the first part is, who is this Jesus? Amen. Many Christians think it is absurd for anyone to ask which Jesus or Messiah are we talking about? Amen. I'm sorry, but if I said, who is this Jesus? I'm sure you feel like, why would you ask me that question? Don't you know the Jesus I'm talking about? But I can tell you, there are many Messiahs and there are many Jesus. It is a word like that. There are many people, Jesus Christ was actually called Jesus of there were, there were other Jesus in the scriptures, by Jesus. There were other Jesus in other places. Like it's like saying a biome of um, of um, North East, or like saying a king of downtown. Amen. But if you just use, um, if you just say a biome, there are a lot of a on on on, on the website. Amen. So you need to narrow it down. So like when we speak about Jesus, I don't want to just think about. Oh yes, but we need to narrow it down. So which Jesus? Are we talking about? Amen. And I pray that the God of heaven will give us grace to be able to pray this word in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 18. This is my prayer today. This same Jesus and the topic and the title and the. Um, the if you just go online, go online by 5 p.m., you'll find it there. Amen. Go online, you'll find this topic and this text there. Amen. So, Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 18. Is I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know. Amen. Let me tell you, there's a difference between God giving me a word and there's a difference between you receiving it. Because I remember one day I went for one class um, or one course and the lecturer drew something on the on the board. He drew something on the board and told everybody what he did. We believe it, we all saw different things. That day I saw McDonald's. Did you know the symbol M? That was it did something like that on the board. So to me, that was my donut right away. To me, I was thinking my donut. So I'm thinking about my girls. Some other lady said she saw two mountains. Some other person said they saw a leg, um, um, a lady's tie, cross. Of course, you can say that person's perverse. That's why you see that. <laughs> but you see, we all saw different things. And likewise, a message can be coming out. And we can all see different things. But I pray that the gate of heaven will open our eyes, that we will see what He wants us to see in Jesus' name. But there are times I sit down, this is what is coming to me. I tell myself, God, give me the grace and the ability to show you these people like you're coming to me. Amen. Because when I, when I get the word, I feel like, oh, this is the blessing. But there are times I come and I tell myself, do you really get it the way I got it? Amen. I pray that you, you will all get it the way. He has given to me in Jesus' name. So the first question is this, who is this Jesus? And for the purpose of this teaching, we divide this, uh, we divide, um, looking at Jesus, the person Jesus, into three categories. First of all, we look at the divinity characters or the divine characters of Christ. Amen. We look at the divine characters of Christ. We, we, um, we want to start place. We look at the character quality. Amen. So we look at the divine qualities, we look at the character qualities, and we look at the power qualities. Amen. So today alone, so if this teaching is in the three parts, today is the first part, the next week and in two weeks again. The first part we're talking about is the divine qualities. Amen. So who is this Jesus? We are not, we're trying to look at Jesus from the divine qualities, and there are four of them. Amen. The first one is this. This Jesus we are talking about is the God that was before time. 
Amen. So the first quality is, who is the Jesus? The Jesus, who is God before time. It's divine quality. Those who claim to be Jesus or make claims that they are something or that Messiah, all do this within time frame. Amen. Everyone that said that something were people who were normal people before a certain time. They were not, they, they, they never, never claim anything before they were born. Amen. I'll give an example, Buddha. Buddha never said it was anything before it came to be. He believed that it was a time thing, he, he had a change in his point of life, and it became something unique. So, though it claims to be something, but he does not have the quality that Jesus Christ has. Jesus Christ has the quality that is beyond time. Amen. So the first quality of Jesus was God before time. Any other God, every other God, or every other being that claims that there's Messiah always did that within time. Amen. Another example is Muhammad. Muhammad never said he was special until a certain time. Until a certain time, he said he went onto the mountain and he had an encounter with an angel. So he was nothing until that time. Or let's look at um, uh, the um, book of uh, the Mormon. Joseph Smith. He never claimed he was anything before he had an encounter with the angel. Before he went to the uh, uh, to the place, to the mountain and he dropped the scrolls. But Jesus Christ is God before he was born, God after he was born, and God after he even died. Amen. So he was God in all realms. So we are speaking about a God that lives outside time, Jesus. A God that lives within time, Jesus. A God that exceeds time, Jesus. Amen. So there's nothing that can compare Jesus Christ to his God. Amen. Or any of these uh, so-called Messiahs or Saviors. Let's open our Bible to the book of John chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. John chapter 1, from verse 1 to 2. Jesus is a God that actually exceeded before time. In John chapter 1, he said, In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. He was with God in the beginning. Before time actually began to speak, he was God. Amen. Before time was conceived, he is God. Amen. And even in time, he was made manifest in and uh, even in time, it was, made, it was made manifest in many forms. Amen. Many of us only think that Jesus Christ was only made manifest in the New Testament. That's not true. If you read uh, the book of Hebrews, the Bible said, um, Melchizedek was in the order, Jesus Christ was in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek himself was born. Because, uh, the Bible said, and Abraham paid price for Melchizedek. It was to bow to him and call him Lord. And only God can take something, only the high priest of God can take um, tithe from you. Amen. So, Methuselah was a type of Christ in the Old Testament. He was a man that he had no beginning, he had no end. He was called the Prince of Peace. Amen. He the King of, uh, of um, Salem. He the King of Salem. And Salem means peace. They then, nobody knew where he came from, nobody knew where he went to. At one point, he just existed, and after, he disappeared again. Amen. Jesus Christ was as made it was as been made manifest many times in the Bible. But also, if you read through the scriptures, you hear a place where they call what's that an angel? They say the angel of the Lord. Every other angel bow to them. They tell you don't do it. But there's only one that they call the angel of the Lord. It comes in the form of a man, and that's why they call him the angel of the Lord because it's like it's like it's God Himself. He's the only one that they tell you if you bow to him, you take it. Amen. And, and we believe that just as Jesus Christ manifesting himself to us. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So let's also read the book of Luke chapter 2, from verse 10 to 11. When Jesus Christ was born, Luke chapter 2, from verse 10 to 11, when Jesus Christ was born, even the angel spoke about him. Amen. So, and said, but the angel said to him, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause good for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Amen. Even when he was born, when he came in the time, even the divine things were spoken about him. Amen. He was spoken of as Messiah. Amen. And even the prophet himself called him as God. Amen. 
the rich and the, um, Simon and um, what's that lady's name? I forgot her name. Um, Simon and let's let Anna. Yes, Simon and Anna were two holy people, and these people God kept them. They looked at to the soul. Jesus Christ being made manifest. If you look at the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 34 to 38, 34 and 38, 34, that was when Simon saw him. Simon said, Then Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of in Israel and to be a son that will be spoken against. Amen. When even holy men saw him, they confirmed he was God. And even Anna, in um, verse 38 said, coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Amen. Jesus Christ, before time, is God. And even when he was born, is God. None of these other people could say they were God at that time. And even when he was a boy, he even spoke of himself as a God. Amen. Let me open our Bible to Luke chapter 2, verse 49. I want someone else to read Luke 2 for time. Luke 2 for time, yes. Why were you searching for me? Why are you searching for me? Yes. Yes. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's eyes? Yes. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Amen. Imagine we start looking for Chobani, and he tells us that, don't you know, why are you looking for me? Don't you know I'm supposed to be doing this? Amen. But they did not understand. Even as a boy, knew who he was. So it was not like um, like me now, if you tell me when I was 10, right now I was going to do it. I never thought that picking God's word would be something I would ever do. Because I can tell you, despite anything, I just put a good my parents have to make me go. And I stand there. And I touch my mind. I just keep doing Why can't we stop and let's play this girl somewhere else? But today I'm standing here. Why? I'm not God. Of course, I didn't know but um, one day I will be prepared for a time like this. And I can tell you, we are all different. We are all, we all grew up in different areas to be able to affect different people. If I, if I see someone that is very naughty, I can relate to them because I feel like I understand where they're coming from. When the kid is going back to them, I'm like, <laughs> the kid from is us. Amen. So when they're acting out, I'm like, I can handle it. Why? I, 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 and that's what Paul said. He said, Peter is a uh, is an apostle to the Jews, but I am an apostle to the Gentiles. Likewise, I see myself as an apostle or someone that can relate to naughty people, people that are very wild. Amen. Because there are some people who can never comprehend why you have five girlfriends. I'm sure that it's a it's from people that, oh, I have five girlfriends, same time. They're like, what? Really? But to me, I, I, I think I understand why. If you're not a Christian, I think you have five at one time. Amen. One, one in every area code. But that was in the world. But today, I have, uh, I'm changed. Amen. I can relate to people and make them understand that that's not what God is trying to do. Let's also open our Bible to go to John chapter 5, chapter 8, verse 28. John 28. Jesus I said, Verily, I truly, I tell you, before Adam was born, I am. John 8, 58. Before your father Abraham, I, I was. Amen. So he was even confirmed this. Angels spoke of him at his birth. He spoke of himself as a boy. And even as a man, he spoke of himself. Before your father Abraham, I had been around a long time ago. Amen. Jesus did not attend his divinity. He got that. He got like that. Like that. After he performed some, uh, because he performed any great deed, but rather he received that ability from an immemorial. Amen. The Yeshua did not become Yeshua because, oh, he just rose up. No, he became that power. The name um, Jesus was exalted even long before. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. Revelation 1 8. The Bible says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. Jesus Christ existed before time. He's the God that was before time. He's the God that exists out of time. He's the God that was within time and was outside time at the, at the same time. Amen. And I pray it will remain manifest to us in Jesus' name. 
Time is a human construct. We are the ones that construct time. You know, many of us are the ones that tell ourselves that, oh, today is my birthday. Tomorrow is what I want to do. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. But when you got some God into Israel out of Israel, out of Egypt, he told them, let this be the beginning of days for you. That means you are telling them, whatever days you have been doing before, pass away. But today, I love the end. Sister Fumi sent me um, something on WhatsApp yesterday. She said, many of us focus on um, birthday, uh, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, what are all these days, but nobody thinks of men day. I can tell you, there's a day that is better than any other day that any of us can imagine. That's the day you do your life to Christ. Because if you do that one, if you, if you see the same, if you are born, every man that is born once, you die twice. Okay, every man that dies twice, no, wait. Every man that dies once, no, wait. Every man that is born once and die once, we die a second time. But if, if a man that is born once and dies, we never die again. Oh, I'm not sure if I Okay, anyone that is born twice, we only die once. But anyone that is born once, we die twice. So thank you very much. Because when you give your life to Christ, you're born again. So you only die once. The only time I'm going to die is when I actually sleep. We don't really die, we actually sleep. But those who are just born once, are going to be the ones that are going to die again at Judgment Day. Amen. So please, forget about birthday, uh, celebration day, that day, Sandara day. And I can it's every day. Do you know that every day of the calendar has something? This, uh, uh, last week, we were celebrating uh, uh, Green Day. Just at my work, I saw an email and it said, oh, today is Greek Day. I'm like, so they have a day for Greek. They have Greek Day, they have Mother's Day, they have HIV Day, they have all kinds of days for everything. But we need us to focus on God, amen. And I pray that we have opportunity this morning. The human construct, and to only exist in time, is a limitation itself. So if we believers, we are believers of the follow of Christ, if our, if our hope is only in this time, the Bible has been said we are more, men most miserable. If you open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 19, right? 1 Corinthians 15, 19. The Bible said, if only, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all men, we are all people most to be pitied. Amen. If even we, we are, we are not even born at this point, if our life is only within this time frame, we are people most pitied. Yeah. If any man tells you there are any savior, and yet they are living within a time frame, they are not most people. Amen. Buddha is dead. He does not claim that he can hear anyone. He himself is where he is going. Uh, mm, uh, Muhammad is dead. Uh, which other religion we know? Can be from whatever, if he's far or whatever. Or whatever they call themselves, they are all dead. They, they only live from go. They only live within a time frame, and that's it. But if, even if we believe that, just even can find ourselves to this time frame. Amen. We know that we are much better than what we are today. But on that day when Jesus Christ will come, we shed this mortal body and put on immortality. Amen. Amen. I think we are talking to Jesus Christ. So the first quality of Jesus that makes him see the, every other savior is that is a God that exists outside time. It's a God before time, the God within time, and a God that manifests himself in, in all times. Amen. And I pray that that God who was able to provide for the poor in the in a time with that that see the thing that this God is not worth and yet they are Amen. If that God can do it at that time, I pray that that, that same Jesus will do for us in Jesus' name. And that same Jesus who was able to bring a dead man back to life. We do uh, everything that goes back to life in our life in Jesus' name. The second thing is this, the second divine quality of Jesus Christ is this, we have the fullness of God. Amen. So now we're looking at his divine qualities, his divine characteristics. So the first one is, is a God who is an outside time. Every other Savior are within time. Most of them will tell you, oh, when I was a baby, I just knew I was special. But this Christ 
was a God that exceeds outside time. That's the first one you see. And the second one is, is the God who is, he has the fullness of God in himself. Let me read what I wrote here. I said, Look, we are God's act for, which is a secondary God. But Jesus Christ is a God who has the fullness of God in himself. Some people will tell you that uh, this God can only do this, he can do that. I can only deal with money and I can't take out disease. Some other ones will tell you I can only take out disease, I don't give you money. Some will tell you my sincerity is this area, not this area. But Jesus Christ is the only God that we know that has all the fullness of God in himself. Amen. Let's read Colossians chapter 1, Colossians 1 15. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Christ, the invisible image of the invisible God, he existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Amen. He has the, is the fullness of God himself. He has the supremacy of God. Whatever makes God God is in Christ. Amen. He cannot die in forever. God is immortal. He's omnipotent. Amen. A man who took fish and bread, he broke it and he multiplied. Amen. A man who said, Cast the net upon the right side. I'll, I'll ask yourself, why does he always say the right side? Why does the left side? He said, Cast the net to the right side. And these people have fish. As soon as they cast that net to the right side, they put a lot of fish. That means he was able to create fish at that same moment. Amen. It was my God who would tell you when they wanted money. He said, Go catch the fish, put it in his mouth, the best money you see, take it and pay for myself and yourself. Is a God, he is the God who has the fullness of God in himself. Let's open our Bible to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6. Somebody can read that for us, please. Philippians 2, 6. Yes, please. Philippians 2, 6. Philippians 2, 6. Okay. Who being in the form of God? Who being in the form of God? Because it's not worthy to be equal with God. When he came to earth, he did not think that it is as it is compared with God. You know, as he confessed and said that I'm God. Amen. And that was why people would say, why did Jesus Christ pray? Because he is God, yes, but he did not want to come with um, um, equality as a raw basis to say I'm God. Amen. And that was why he was trying to first give us a, a standard vow. And that was why he prayed and he wants us to over pray. Amen. Otherwise, many people have said, this time is not going to pray, so I don't, I don't need to pray. That was why he said, he told John the Baptist, he said, because to fulfill the law, for to, to fulfill all righteousness, baptize me. Amen. He wants the feet of his servant. Not because he needs to, but to show that to be the word, he must first be bottom. The way up is actually down. But many of us always think that the way up is to just teach other people. But then actually the way up is actually down. Amen. Like Brian Charles said this morning, most people were in a better place before they met God. And after they met God, they actually dropped. Take for example, Elijah, uh, Elijah, uh, Elisha. Elisha had a farm. He had oxen. But when God called him, what did he do? He killed his oxen, burnt it, burnt the, the everything, and he followed God. Another, another person, Abraham. Abraham was a man who lived in all the houses. God told him, leave your people, leave your... Imagine, you have to leave everything you have. Follow God. Moses, he was, a, he was a prince of Egypt. And so many of us are willing, maybe we are willing to give up anything just to come to Canada. Are you willing to give up your Canadian citizenship for God? Of course, we are not Canadian, we are British. Are you willing to give up your British citizenship for God? Yeah, good, and that's what we want because I think some people are willing to do evil just to get that money in there. So we are asking for this new righteousness to protect it. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. So what we're going to say is this. Eternity is not just in words. Amen. Let us show it in, in, in our days. This class is God because it's God all outside time and we have the fullness of God. Look at his words. God, we know that God's words are power. God said in the book of Isaiah, he said, I, um, my word, the words that come out of my mouth will not be will not bite to me void, unless you have told them which I have sent it. Amen. In the book of Abba, he said, the vision is for an appointed time. Don't so tarry. Wait for it. It must surely come. 
9, 1 verse 9. He said, Everything that I like, I think the Lord shall come by and turn. It's an inspiration to everything. Any plan the enemy has against God must come to an end. Why? They will die. For God, we continue to live. Amen. I think we all continue to live. Jesus Christ is God. He's worth so this. If you look at John chapter 6, verse 63, John 6, verse 63, he said, The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. These are words that I tell a man, Go, be healed. He did not even talk to him. He became healed. Amen. 63. He proved himself as a creator. Even while he was here on earth, he, a man, the Bible said a man was blind. There was nothing in that eye of Great guys um, looked, passed into the uh, ground, made mud from it, and put it on his eyes. What are you trying to do? In the beginning, the Bible said um, God um, made man from the dust of the earth. Great guys was recruiting us to that man. And he saw a man that had no eyeballs, nothing was there. And he put it on. I said, Go and walk. As soon as the man washed it off, everything came on. Amen. He showed himself as a creator. Amen. He also put himself as one that has power over death. Here you are, God. You'll be able to not die. Amen. That will make you a God, immortal. I remember seeing that I've been this yesterday, and I always tell myself, if I want to be anything, I want to be incredible heart. Why? I mean, it's not the actually the cheapest of them all, but it's the only one almost indestructible. Put anything inside of him. The more, the bigger the weapon, the stronger it gets. I remember when I was young, I used to pretend like I, I'm a werewolf. I like, you know, I like supernatural stuff. And, and you know what I see? You really want to say you're a god. You, are, you must be. I, the first Avengers, I remember uh, when um, Loki, when he was gone, the incredible Avengers took him, wiped him on the ground every time, told him, see me, God, and walked away. That if you are God, I can wipe you. He was just thinking, pow, 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 pow. But the Bible stood there, he doesn't walk away and said, see me, God. He was still a God, but a small one. He can't even contest with him. But Jesus Christ is a God that actually has power over there. I'll tell you. Many people have been able to defeat sickness. The people who are over 80, my uh, father-in-law is 83. Am I right today? And if, uh, if he walks, if he talks, when he talks to you, you think he's a young man. Amen. He jokes, he, he didn't forget something he told him. No, last year, 10 years ago, oh no, I didn't know him 10 years ago, or 5 years ago. You know, it's still, everything is still there. There are people who have been able to beat sickness. There are people who have been able to beat poverty. In the days of Solomon, Solomon was so wealthy that silver was as common as the dust of the earth. Then there will be a time you are so rich that when you find coins, you know, you know, you know, you know that city bank works is when you are rich. Do you know that? Only city bank. The only time it works is when you are rich. If you are poor, you break it. The second time I tried to have a city bank, when it gets to one point, like, please, this is the time you need to work. But, amen. But if you really say you are wealthy, that's when you work with people. You will not even look in this. You just need all the things in your pocket, and be keeping it somewhere. But because you are that way, you don't have a record, you will be looking at your car. Where did I keep this change? Amen. Why? You don't need it, you are not enough. But there are people who have been, who have been able to beat poverty. But nobody has been able to beat death. The rich man will die. The poor man will die. The man that is healthy will die. The guy that goes to gym will die. The one that is not going to gym will die. But one person who was able to beat death and will die to his son. Let's talk about the first Corinthians 15, verse 4. Said he was buried. And he was raised on the third day. I think it's first point is if you fall. Jesus Christ has power over them. Jesus Christ, uh, I remember, I said, I said something. You might see that I'm putting in a lot because, of course, it's the greatest to me now, so we tend to talk, we tend to talk more. One day he said something. He said, You realize that every other person that was raised dead were raised by the help of some other person. But this guy is the only person, nobody went to his grave, he was there. Lazarus, which has called him first. The direct daughter, which has first child. The man that um, 
we got at uh, uh, after Elijah died, Elijah's born, what team? The great flag, nobody went down. They were even they even blocked it. Yes, he rose up. Amen. And also, he's the only one who gave it to no man to live. You can't tell me you're God and yet you're still falling to the same thing I'm doing. Then what makes you different from me? In the book of John, verse 14, verse 30, verse 14, verse 30, John 14, he said, Take the people that it will come next and find nothing in me. Yes, I'm the only one that no fear. The devil cannot say, I have this against you. The thing is, we look at Mohammed and say, Oh, he married, you can show that I was looking on YouTube on Facebook, rather. Somebody said he married a um, young girl, or uh, you know, he married multiple wives, or look at Buddha, or look at somebody. They always have something. This guy is the only one. You can't say he has anything. He died for us. This guy was free. He was free, and even when he was about to die, he didn't confess. If it, be, if it was me, if I know I don't do anything, uh, so that's why I always say that um, somebody, if you didn't do anything wrong, if you thank him, he will cry because he knows, I don't know why you picked me, but if you did something wrong, if you thank him, he will like, okay, I'm not deserving. If it was me, I will be cross, my prayer will be different. Ah, of course. This is what we can do. Amen. And yet he said, he said, Father, forgive them for me. They don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. Hey. And I'll tell you, the way I'll show people will not be, but I'll show them right now. I'm not sure that the guy will be right. Let God give you what he says. It's okay, that's it. And let the legs fall off. Let the eyes drop out. And that's why, if you read the book of our, we're going to see the book of that. Jesus said to the uh, to John, and he said to you, he said, let us call that fire from heaven to consume those who are, who didn't believe you. But Jesus said, why would you do such things? What do you know what kind of things you are made of? I know it's very easy for us to say, Father, every of my enemies die, but I can tell you, and I'm saying it boldly, I know we're going to put it online, God does not answer such prayer. Amen. You see that there are times, the child might tell you, Mommy, I want to beat uh, um, somebody, uh, Baba Tini for me. He said, he beat me, so thank him. They might hear what he said, but I will tell him, Baba Tini, don't beat your brother anymore. But they won't do what you know. As you know, most of the time, you, you think that your parents will use a big stick and beat your elder brother because you did something bad. Your brother, the daddy will just say, don't do that to your brother, okay? All right, and then go to your room. And your mind like, daddy, but at least you have gotten the justice you need. But many of us always pray, oh God, every enemy, that there's no woman to go down. Yes, that's what the disciple. Many of us think that this is the first time that prayer has come. No, that prayer has been. That prayer is the prayer of John and James. The son of, they call them the sons of thunder. The people who, if you mess with them, they do. They get it from them. The Bible again told them, he told them the sons of thunder, oh, they're the sons of Zebedee. And I pray that we help us in Jesus' name. And here's what I said, you will see the Father, you will see me. John chapter 14, verse 9. You will see the Father, you will see me. Everything that you need to see in God, you will see in Jesus Christ. All that so-called Messiah came to be leaders, or came to lead other people, but Jesus Christ himself is in point. Amen. All other people will tell you that, oh, I will, I will take it to somebody else, I will take it to somebody else. But Jesus Christ, if you go to Jesus Christ, you've, reached, you've got into the end point. Amen. And I pray that that same Jesus Christ, who is the end point for every trouble, will, be, will come to us today in Jesus' name. But every trouble, because we have come to Jesus Christ, every trouble in our life, we come to our name in the name of Jesus. That man, that, that woman, were about to go and bury his um, son. But they, they actually met Jesus Christ. It was a done deal. The talk was already done. He was already going to mourn the child. But they met the child, they met Jesus Christ on the way, and then they brought back him back to life. And I pray that this Christ would bring everything that is dead now back to life in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to go to my, my daughter and I want to marry some of them got that. So put them. Amen. Amen. That's all we have to do this for. He's so young. I thought, I thought it was the only thing my own daughter. Amen. Amen. So now we have looked at two qualities. It's the two divine qualities. The first one is, is God before time. The second one is, is God who has the fullness of God. Amen. It's not just God who has some small part and cannot do some other things. The God who has everything, Amen. Is God in everything? 
And something is this, it's actually called the Son of God. Thankful to God during the time of election. And may peace are encouraged everyone. If you can vote, please go vote. Amen. Yes, but if you can vote, please vote. Amen. Please. I've never had, I've had, normally I don't tell people to do politics, but you know, the Christians make a change in our community. Amen. Let us go and vote so we can make a change. And I can tell you, during this election, you can see that many politicians are endorsing messages. We hear, come for change. PC. Is it is that thing? No. NDP or something like that, I don't know. Or whatever it is. It's, um, NDP endorses this message. Or yes, PC endorses this message. Amen. The only person that gets that endorsed, that God endorses in public, is Jesus. When I was endorsed to come and preach here, what did I tell you, people? I told you that I had a, a conviction in my heart, I had a dream, I had a shot of oil poured on my head, and when I woke up, I could feel the oil on me. But you didn't, you didn't see it, did you? Can you believe this? Yeah. When uh, Peter was called, uh, Paul was called, he was the only one who had that experience on his way to Damascus. Every other person there, if he, he saw that bright light, he had that experience. Yes. He was endorsed by God. We know he was, but he was the only one that had it. But it's only one person that actually was endorsed and everybody heard it. The Bible said, the Bible said, some people said it was a tongue that I was speaking. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Matthew 17, verse 5. You can read the rest when you get home. So let's go play with him. Matthew 17, verse 5. <laughs> I'm sure it's not, 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 I did, I did delight here to you. Amen. Jesus Christ, God himself, and God Jesus right in front of you. At least if you don't want to believe that he's God, God himself is telling you right now, hear him. Amen. When God himself and God is Jesus as a right, so this, but there's, only one, there's no other person in history that can claim they have such dramatic endorsement like Jesus. Yes, I had one in my own dream. I had one um, in, in, in an experience. Peter and Polly had his own. Uh, everybody has their own. Amen. But if we have this endorsement in public, we got himself endorsed. Amen. And if the reason is this, every other person before Christ had a flaw. Even I a flaw. Amen. And that is why I remember if you tell me about me, one as the premier of um, Alberta, I'll tell you no. Why? I know that some things I've done in my life, I don't want anybody to dig out. And the only time they dig it out is when you want to go into politics. That's why it was 20 years ago. People would dig it out. And they would say, oh, because it did this, oh, yeah. so that's why I'd rather not just even on. Amen. I always tell myself, God, I have called me, I know you're forgiving me, I'll stay where I am. Amen. Every other person that went before Christ, they, they did something wrong. Abraham, ask you that what's the flaw with Abraham? What is the flaw with Abraham? Amen. Was he impatient? He was actually patient, but also he was, he was a man who listened to his wife. His wife told him, go into Abraham. And I'm sure if, if, if she had told him so to do something worse. Not a very smart. Imagine, have you seen a... Um, this movie that can free pass, pass, is it free pass? That the man wanted to go sleep around, and the wife said, Okay, I'll give a free pass to sleep around. Four pass. And they could not even do anything that weekend. They tried, but you know. Most men are very greedy. There was no man. I, I, I saw a joke on um, Facebook. A, 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 a man was traveling for conference, he's not nothing and giving condoms. 
I said, my husband, I know there's many temptations. He took this, but he took my wife. I said, oh, I love my wife. You're very eager. She's becoming my wife. I said, oh, hey, I'm going to die you. He said, four. Give me two. That's why. He said, in case we don't have tempted. I said, no, you have tempted. No, I said, no, you think you're going to be like this. The funny thing is this. Imagine you would really take that offer, but you would not let her take the offer. If you didn't say that, I told Abraham, let me go and sleep with um, our maid. What do you think you would have said? Ah, uh-uh, no. No, no, don't do that to But when she told him, go and sleep with a guy, he said, okay, I can just try it. If you need to do that, but most men will not do the other way. Amen. Was a man who was powerful. Amen. If you look at um, Jacob, he said, see, he said, he even means supplanter, something. That's belly. He has been a supplanter. And many of us always think that even are, um, who they are because of experience, children have been worse, have been bad from the mother's womb. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, the wicked man has been wicked from his mother's womb. It's only coming out to do what he wants to do. My mother said, I am the one that gave her the biggest problem when she had me at, at, in pregnancy. I came out of, after 10 months. And she said, it's because you're the kind of, she told me, she said this way, she said, you're the kind of child that if you don't come out, you become cancer in someone's belly. And it's true, because honestly, she said, she said, I was, I would make her speak, I would give her all necessary stuff. When she thought she was about to give birth, I didn't come out. On the ninth month, I didn't come out. I said, you are not coming anywhere. Amen. On the tenth month. Amen. A wicked man has been wicked from his And my younger brother, my mother said, he was the easiest. After his own brother was born, he was just feed me, he just flew. You know, even when he's supposed to cry for food, he's like, <laughs> they even be begging my mom, he has no more me. Me. He said, just to go and hide, to have a good breath to my brother. Because if I hold you, you're not going anywhere. Amen. I have to do that today with my wife. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> Amen. Moses had a, a very bad temperamental, and Elijah is a mother. A, Elijah actually did something, he pulled a fire from heaven, and he killed 400,000 people. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is endorsed by God Himself. Amen. He's the one that, that speaks life whenever the person is speaking to him. In the book of um, Hebrews 12, verse 24, Hebrews 12, 24, it says, Yes, I blessed these better things than the blood of Abel. Abel never sinned. The Bible never said Abel did anything wrong. But Abel's, Abel's blood was calling out for vengeance against sin. But Jesus Christ's blood is speaking mercy over our lives. When Jesus said, when um, Pilate was watching this, he said, Let his blood be upon you. He said, Yes, let his blood be upon us and our children and children to come. And they, they were not knowing that they were speaking particularly to themselves. Jesus Christ's blood was speaking vengeance. For your speaking mercy. Amen. And that, that spoke mercy on that day, we speak also in Jesus' name. Let's, all, let's also read our uh, open our Bible to Luke 9 55. Now I want somebody, I want um, the thing that Jesus that uh, told me to read Luke 9 55. If you're there, you can read this. Luke 9 55. Well, I think it's in the position of the and oh, can I have them, the NIV, please? NIV version. Oh, uh, NIV um, King James version, please. Okay, but I think I can read, please. No, no, that's fine. You can just read, read. Or my wife can read. Anybody else can read. Yeah, but we need a mic, but also you can come. Can you pass it on to your head, please? Okay. Look now to this time. And um, um, King James. Look now to this time. It says in Look now to this time, but he turned on the day. Start on 54, please. And, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they yes. said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and did consume them, even yes. as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, we know not what manner of spirit we are of. Amen. Don't you know what kind of spirit you are made of? For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another group. Amen. This fight is not even in Christ, yet he did not put them to death. 
I know it's very hard for us to say, oh, this is somebody we want to leave, yes. But the Bible actually said, yes, um, you should not desire that any man to tell us that you should come to repent. Amen. And it is not either you or me that determines who needs to die. Thank God. There will be, the Bible said, when your enemies ask you of um, water, give them, give them by talking when you are heaping coal of fire upon their head. Amen. I pray God we are opposing to you this prayer. The news I give to you today is the one whom God Himself and us at the beginning as it is done, and which mission is to do His Father's will. He is the God that does not want to do His own, but to do His Father's will. We read the book of John, chapter 4, verse 44. It says, My food is to give this all the Father. And I pray that the God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. And lastly, I know I've taken some of our time, He is the God who, em- who can who em- with us. Amen. Looking at all that religion, I see a disconnect. Either the gods are too strong that we cannot connect with them, or they are too human that they are not as bad as us. So if you look at people who call themselves saviors or messiahs or whatever, some of them go to the extreme where they are too supernatural where you cannot relate to them. If you look at um, the Chinese um, or most of the religion, or the Hindu religion, you see a monkey who has a war. In my mind, I'm like, how can I look a monkey who lives on a boat and uh, the world is on a turtle and things like that? You cannot really pass on that. It's just too far, too, too far, too mystical. It's too far fetched. Amen. Why? It's a modern religion. It's too elementary that it becomes too human. But it's just like you yourself. Amen. But Jesus Christ is the only one that can actually be between us and God. Let me tell you, becoming like God is actually possible in the flesh. He said, Be thou perfect as thy heavenly Father is perfect. That means perfect as God is perfect. And Christianity is the only religion that can actually bring that to you. Amen. Every other religion can make you like God. Amen. And what? What makes us like God is not what we do, but it's something that we receive inside of us. Like I said, I was a very naughty kid, but the day I changed, everything became repulsive. To smoke, my friends and I knew I pray that my, oh my computer does not, my dad does not watch this video. He never knew I smoked at any point in my life. He never knew I drank. So as soon as I got home, cold talking. The other sit down and go, that is what I'm saying, you're welcome. I'm saying in his mind, I need the best children. When we go to church, he never knew that we skip church. We go to church, he would drop us off at church, we would keep, we would, keep, we would go back home. And watch India movie, cook spaghetti. When we're about to finish, we come back to church and join in. We now, and when everybody say they're hungry, we don't even say we're hungry. We're hungry. Amen. But today, I actually, uh, like you said, I'm not doing that of law anymore. I'm doing that of love. Amen. To come here at 8 a.m. in the morning and to stay till 11 a.m. does not make me feel like sleep. And that's why when I look at this sleep, they can't sit down five minutes, but I tell you, sit down five minutes, like, what time is it? And I'm like, I'm like, can you enjoy this? Well, of course, I enjoy it because I'm a kid. Honestly, I enjoy it because it's gone. If I, if I go to a party, it was a party. And I think, give me, give me, give me. And I'm like, oh God, this will not finish this thing today. Amen. Why? It does not give me any joy, but this does. Amen. So Jesus Christ is only God that actually can meet with us and God. Amen. Let's open our Bible to uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Hebrews 4, 15, it says, but we do not have a high priest who is able to empathize with our weaknesses. That means that some people who cannot empathize with your weaknesses. That is why if you tell me that um, you, are, you are a robber and you need to come to Christ, I can empathize with you. That is why I, I don't believe in, I believe in capital punishment in some areas. But I don't believe in capital punishment in all areas. And why? The things that I did that people will call capital punishment for. I ask for mercy. So that's why I can relate to these people. If you say, oh, kill all robbers, I'll say no. Because that's why I have done thank you. If you say kill all perverts or things like that, I'll say no. So I have done thank you. But if they kill all psychopaths, I can say yes because I was never one. So you see, the disconnect. But if I was a psychopath, for me, I said, don't kill psychopaths. What? But uh, uh, it's, no, like, on the way, I was like, oh, I want a perfect. No, I want to tell you, perfection is in different levels. A man that looks at 
I say I have a job in every area I call. It's, 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 it's not normal. And that's why um, I was talking to one of my friends. I said, boys that are six words, that have sexual encounters are the very young people. Who, as, they, as old people, they never get satisfied. They get anything they do. But because of people that we sit with us made, with boss, sit with servants, anyone. Because they don't have any control, anything they will do. Which is wrong. So for me, it's not the class. And that's why people keep themselves. And people who are still at class. I don't even know of someone. You can't tell him to go and beat any office and tell him, please, this one, go for this. And that's why my brother, Cindy, I know he's not going to just be a man. Because these are people who, who, who don't think that they will just give it to any other person anyhow. But some of us think that we're just giving it to any man. But thank God that I'm no longer that person anymore. So what we're hearing is we say is this, this class can empathize with us. You understand how we feel. You know, we, want that. we have an eye priest who actually understands how we feel. Amen. He, he so we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. So we have one who can, who has been tempted in every way, just like we are, but yet was without sin. Amen. I uh, pray God we have us in Jesus' name. This guy came in and he, he fully understands what it means to be tempted. And that is why he intercedes for us every day. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it said, Jesus Christ is standing up, sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for us at all times. Amen. He knows what it means to be hungry. He knows what it means to be, to be in love. He knows what it means to meet a loved one. When Lazarus died, what did he say to you? He cried. The Bible says he wept. John 11, 25. The second verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, he loved him so much. Jesus can't know what it means to so you can meet someone. And that's why he can tell God, God, say, deliver my father. Don't let him die. He knows what it means when you tell him that. Because he knows what it means to meet a really loved one. He knows what it means to say, God, give my mother healing. Because he does what I love or see. You know what it means to, for, you, for people to despise you. I said, God, why am I faced with this shame? Change this for me, O oh Lord. And I pray that the God of heaven will do that for us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. Matthew 14, 14. The Bible says, As Jesus Christ looked upon the crowd and he had compassion on them. And it's true. Every miracle that Jesus Christ did came out of compassion, out of love. He didn't do it because he needed to. Amen. Jesus, God does not have to save us. Let me tell you, God can save the church if he wants to. He, he, he told Moses, he said, I will destroy all of them and I will bring a stronger nation from just you alone. He loved God, but Moses said, oh, No, 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 God, please let this stay. And that's why God loved Moses. Amen. God is able to crumble everything like that and bring a new one, but he's loving and he's kind. Amen. He understands what we feel. And that's why he looks at us and says, Yes, we are men. Amen. And I pray that God of heaven will help us into this morning. But that same compassion that he had upon people that he healed them, he have upon us in Jesus' name. So let me tell you, life is much easier when everything is good. Don't you think so? It's good when you come home, your wife has already cooked, and um, you yourself, you have already helped your wife. You know, both of you can go out for a movie, they can make to look after the children, you don't have to think about um, how to manage um, things like that. You know, not when you wake up. And that's why not America. It's one of the hardest places to live. You have to do that care, use yourself. You have to fix the care, use yourself. Your grass is grown, use yourself. Your car is broken down. You, uh, if you don't use yourself, you're going to be paying a lot. I bought a backup camera for $80. To so fix it, that tells me $180. $180. And if you don't take one and a half hours, one hour, that will be done. And they take bring one eighty. And I bought the thing itself for $80. Can see in North America, amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Out of God, out of our God is the God of mercy, who wants us to be all saved. If you read Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, he says, God is slow to anger. If we want us, we does not want anyone to perish, for us, everyone to come to repentance. Also, if you read the book of Ezekiel 18, verse 23, he says, It is not desire the death of the sinner, but they are come to repentance. And he also wants the best for us, amen. If you read the book of Paul John, he said, I wish above all things that it should be well with you, that you may prosper and also prosperous. Amen. It's a God who wants the best for us. It's a God who wants 
good thing for you. Because I have told you a piece of peace and all of not a lot of evil to give you peace and a future. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Amen. And all Jeremiah 29 verse 11, Ezekiel 18 verse 3, 7 verse 3, 9. All these things are put down by trees, all these to the God's desire for us. To the God who wants to be for us. He does not want us to suffer. Amen. He wants us to have all that he has, he has he gave up to us on the cross. So you can be ready to say that, that it is not God's will that you suffer, and that this same Jesus who died for all, for every, for every one of us that he might be with us, is also here to us. Amen. And I pray you will give to us what you have promised in Jesus' name. So in this recap, there are four divine qualities, which the first one is, is God before time, the God who exists before time, the God who has the God who has the fullness of God, is God, who is the Son of God, who is God himself and God, and is the God who can empathize with us. And I pray that the God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. Let's bow our hands as we 